This was a very fun little project to get started and do, and it caused a great deal of interest on YouTube. A steady watcher has asked for more detail, and I will be providing it here with stills, uh, maybe even little video clips. So thank you very much. This still shot shows the bandsaw frame four inches ahead of the uh, uprights. The uprights are uh, positioned with a piece of one inch square tube between them and portions of the split tube. So uh, it gives you a little idea what I did there. Um, the motor obviously is set behind the upright tubes, uh, about 90% or maybe a little more. It helps to even out the weight distribution. That's it, nothing special. This still depicts the two channel irons I'm using. One of them is two inches wide, probably three quarter inch deep. It's the reddish colored one on the bottom. The upper one is approximately three inches by inch and a half. It is bolted to the upper wheel frame of the bandsaw uh, to be seen again very soon. That it's a bare frame. Um, you can see the nuts in this shot. On the right hand side behind the silver pulley, you can see just see both nuts. Uh, how that C channel is fastened in there. On the other side, behind the black pulley, you can also see two silver nuts, and those were a plate that was about three inches thick, three, excuse me, three eighths of an inch thick, and uh, it's bolted to the bottom frame. Not only is it bolted to the bottom frame, but the heads of the bolts are welded to that plate because I would not be able to get to them later on. The plate is welded to the two inch by three quarter inch C channel and spaced so that the uh, spacing is square to the track. You will also see in this bare bones photo that uh, I have placed down a piece of aluminum old screen door, storm door, underneath of the uh, two pulleys that will carry the bandsaw blade. This was done so that I could measure up to the two inch by three quarter C channel and make sure I could cut a six inch cant between the blade and that C channel. Now we're going to look back a little bit further and you can also see that that worked out well for two angle irons with the top angle facing left and right and that's where I mounted the engine. Okay, you're going to see that coming up in the next photo too, I believe. Uh, no. Oh yeah, here we are. So you can actually see the motor bolted to uh, the angle irons. <clears throat> there is below that a piece of one by one square tube. That helps sturdy up those two angle irons. Okay, you can also see my extension at the top is bolted to the cast iron frame on the right hand side of the photo. We're going to the next photo. Uh, this shows the attachment to the cast iron base on the black pulley side or the drive side. Some people say I made a mistake on this. It worked well for me. I would suppose on much, much larger logs it could be a problem. But uh, in this particular case, the blade is pushed through the log rather than pulled through the log.
Okay, another shot of the uh, motor mount, and here you can see on the left-hand side of the extension where it is bolted to the uh, cast iron frame. That extension, by the way, is 12 inches. I did that because it was easy to figure, just, just for me. And it worked out well. It gave me a 19-inch throat. A 19-inch throat will cut a 20-inch log easily. Okay, the next photo just shows the split square tube running up and down the square tube uprights. Square tube uprights, I believe, are 2 inch. The split square tube is, I believe, 2 and a half with quarter inch walls. And I did whatever I needed to do to make a spacer and keep it fairly close so it could still slide but it took up some of the slop. You will also see the yellow handle which is a lock nut on the screw and that screw is has a T-handle if you want to lock it down on the square tube. It goes in on an angle and it fits on the cor corner of the two inch square tube the reason for that is you don't want to rough up that tube if you're trying to slide it up and down. Okay, just a backup shot. Um, you can see here that uh, part of the subframe for the handlebars are in place. Um, behind the gas tank on the motor, you can see a spacer bar, and that helps hold the top of the bandsaw frame <coughs> square to the rest of the unit. Later on, I put a little bit more bracing in there. Uh, it is welded directly to a three-quarter, uh, excuse me, a one-inch square tube and to the extension. Good welding spot. Okay, uh, what else? Just another shot of the same split tube, um, the spacer bar. Uh, a little bit of the subframe for the handlebars. This little thing worked quite well, I gotta say. Um, very good. We're gonna stop there. If you have any more questions, shout them out. Thank you so much.